Okay, the day is finally here. We finally get to start putting down our flooring. And we are so excited because for us, we've always kind of had this mentality of like, we can't even think about the possibility of being done until we see flooring in here. And like, then we'll know we're close. Cause we still have like a whole finished checklist of a million things, like little things that we need to do. But the flooring feels like some great milestone of like, we are almost done. So today is the day we get to start that and we're really excited. So we looked around, we knew we wanted to do a vinyl plank flooring because we needed something not too thick, waterproof, and really durable. Vinyl plank kind of checked all of those boxes and you know, we looked at all the box stores, Lowe's and Home Depot. We went to some flooring specialty stores and looked at everything they have and most of them you know, look really good. As long as they are waterproof and not just water resistant, they all kind of look good to us. But after kind of talking with Jake and Steve at the flooring outfit where we got our waterproofing supplies for our shower, they also do flooring. And so we love supporting local companies when we can. And so we decided to buy our flooring from them. So this is what we're going with. It does have a built-in underlayment on it, but we are actually gonna be doing a couple of other things before we actually lay that down. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our Ceratex, which is what we insul like was our first layer of insulation. And it's only an eighth of an inch thick. Now we don't really need an underlayment because this has underlayment on it, but we're kind of doing it for two reasons. One is it does add an extra layer of insulation for cold floors, but the main reason we're doing it is because we are actually adding heated floors. And this is what we are using. It's, we just got it off Amazon. It's called Quiet Warmth, and there's other manufacturers that make similar products, but this is an electric heated floor. You can see it's just this film. I don't even think it's a 64th of an inch thick. It, it is so, so thin and basically the thickness of it is negligible except for the wiring. This is made to go under any kind of flooring. It only warms to about 85 degrees. So it's totally safe to be under vinyl. You can put it under tile. You can put it under just about anything, but it is typically going to go over an underlayment and then you sort of channel out the underlayment to run the wires. And so all of our wires are gonna kind of come and go to a central point and then we have a wireless thermostat with a sensor, a temperature sensor that we're gonna be mounting and everything is gonna run into our broom closet. So we needed something with just a little bit of depth to channel out and allow us to run those wires without affecting our flooring. We did lay this stuff out and just kind of tested it all out yesterday. Where was it gonna go? How are we gonna route all the wires? We tested, They there's a sticker on each one that tells what the resistance is. So we tested the resistance on each one to make sure it matched up with specs and that there weren't any shorts anywhere. And then that way, once we actually wired up, we can double check it again, make sure we're still good. I think that's it. We're ready to get started. One thing we are going to do before we actually start laying it down is we're going to kind of leave our mark here in a bus. We have hidden little notes in places we were like putting little metal patches on the bus we wrote little notes and sharpie on them but we're gonna have all of us sign our names put our handprints write little messages on the subfloor before we lay, lay everything down it's just kind of our put our last little stamp in here before we cover it all up so we're about to get started It's the coldest hand that run down this land Where the ocean lands It's the tallest sound, the damn smallest crowd But their hearts break loud Far from ever feeling lost with me I'll push you back towards the land and sea Crowd with me, never lost among the crowd with me. Everywhere you go, I'll be. 
the sun The gun done for love It's a pulse and shove It's the sharpest cry The heat goes but why Where the desperate lie Far from ever feeling lost with me I'll push you back towards Atlantis sea They're going out for love and love is free Stick with me and I will guarantee You'll never last among the crowd with me So we're ready to start working on actually laying the floor down. And so what we did is we took all the pieces out of all the boxes that we have and we sorted them based on the pattern of like the wood grain. What does it look like on the actual top of the piece? And what we came up with is that there's basically four different patterns that they used and we pile them up and this will help us kind of mix and match them so we don't end up with like three planks in a row that all have the exact same pattern. It'll look more natural if we kind of move them around a little bit. The nice thing though, we've, we've actually laid a lot of laminate floors and so we've always done it this way, but this particular flooring, even within what's the same pattern, there's a lot of variety. So. Like you can tell, like this pile, it's all kind of the same pattern, but it might be shifted like, you know, one way or the other, like a marking that is up here on one plank is actually back here on another one, or on some of them, they flipped them 180. So these are all the same pattern groups, but there's still variety within those. So what we do to make it easier on ourselves between like the person that's running in and out bringing pieces and, um, is we give them each name. So we've named them haircloth, eyebrow, hair, and toe. <laughs> so, because those were like little things that we saw. We're like, that looks like a toe and that looks like a bear claw. So we say, hey, go get me, go get me a eyebrow. And so then they, we know which one we need. So that's what makes it easier for us and hopefully it will end up giving us a little more uh, variety and not you know, where we don't end up with the same thing exactly right next to each other.
Okay, so we just laid down the second heat mat out of four, but all of the wires from the front two are coming here and the back two are coming here. They're all meeting up. And then all the wires are gonna go down this hole that we drilled through the subfloor down into the basement. And we drilled another hole in our broom closet. So the wires will go down and then back up into the broom closet and run up to the thermostat. And then from the thermostat is the sensor wire. So that's gonna have to go the opposite way and come down and back up. And from all the installation videos we watched installing this with floating floors, this just needs to go real close to one of the mats. And again, I've channeled out a little spot for it, but it cannot touch any of the black part of the mat. So before we tape this down, we're gonna go ahead and lay this floor sensor in here and then tape over all of this together. And we have to do this all now because our next piece of wood flooring is gonna cover up this hole. So we have to get all the wires ready to go down the hole before we can move on with flooring. All right, the heated floors are all laid down, all the wires are run, everything is taped down, and it's nice and flat, and all the wires are going in right down here. Um, and so now we can actually get back to laying the floor down, and then when we're all done laying the floor, then we can deal with wiring up those wires into the thermostat, but we're gonna get back to laying down the floor next.
So we've tied up all of the wires from the heating elements into these two Wagos here. So those two Wagos will then just live up in this box and then we've got a, got a little cover for it to cover it up. Um, and then we'll have two wires coming out. All right, so we've hooked up our thermostat. We brought the wires in from the bay. We had to cut a little hole in our little rubber piece there. We brought them all the way up and into a little electrical box. And then from there, we have it in here. And so it will um, control everything from here. So this little module is Wi-Fi enabled and it allows us to set um, where we want the temperature of the floor to be and it also has a scheduler in there so you don't have to manually program it there's also an app for the phone um, and it will tell you what the current floor temperature is right now which is 84 because it's blazing hot here so anyway we've tested it by just bringing it up just a tiny little bit um, it did turn on. It uses between six and 700 watts, which is what we calculated. So that should be about right. That's about five-ish uh, amps on 120. Um, so it seems to be working correctly. So So we finished the stairs and we finished just gluing down the treads and what we used for trim work on all of these is just some um, aluminum angle and on this step that lifts up we pulled it out just enough that we could get our fingers under there to lift it up of course I had to make it cute and that's one of our places to put shoes um, we finished all the diamond plate and on our drawer now uh, we we just to get it out because it's recessed back under there we used like f um, furniture screws with some spacers to create tiny little knobs for ourselves to we'll pull this out and so that's our other little <laughs> flip-flop shoe drawer and so now our entryway is all done and while we were at it we addressed the door finally it was like the last ugly ugly part of the bus so we finished that off we put kill mat to start to kind of make a sound deadening layer filled it all with our uh, rock wool insulation and then we added diamond plate on the top and that was a nice good solid surface for mounting our handle as well as a grab bar 
but we didn't do it all the way down because what we decided to do as a fun thing and we got this idea from our really good friends tiny shiny home and what they did on their airstream door is we decided to make just um this is just sheet aluminum and it's rib nutted in so this whole panel can be removable actually this one can too if we ever need to access like the handle mechanism or anything in there. These are all gonna be removable. And so what we thought we would do is as we travel, we'll collect stickers from the places that we go and we'll put stickers on the door. Um, just, you know, as kind of a little memento from all the places that we've traveled. And then someday when we fill this up, we can take this panel off and we could frame it and put it in a house someday and then just make another panel. I mean, it's just a rectangle and screw it back in and start again. So this is finally our finished door that we're really happy with how this whole entryway turned out. And then we'll take you inside and show you kind of the finished flooring that we added more trim to inside. Okay, so here is sort of the finished flooring all the way through the whole interior. You may also notice that there's some things here that weren't here before because we've actually started the process of moving in, which is so exciting, but we're kind of halfway moving into the bus while we're cleaning out our house to get it ready to sell. So we've got, we're kind of living in two places right now between the bus and our house. Um, so you'll see some things in here that we've already started moving in, but flooring is done. We, the last thing we did was add trim work. So we've got a couple different things like over by the wheel wells, we just added some um, just thin wood trim. And back here where we have wire chases <clears throat> we that we need access to, this is actually like a corner, like a corner molding that we put some little blocks in and, and screwed that in. And so that we could pull out and have access to all of our wires. On this side, we actually made a big, a really big um, kind of L-shaped thing because that also houses our mini split lines. And so that needed to be a lot bigger, but it's all tucked away under those chairs. Um, elsewhere, we just used really, like really thin, I think it's like three eighths of an inch um, quarter round. And this actually <laughs> was just a natural wood that I mixed up my own, like I combined two stains to stain it to match our floors. So we use that and again, kind of back in the kids room, um, we did trim work around that floor and around the vanity, we painted it black and so trying to make it match in different places. So that's kind of what we have all around the rest of the areas is that really thin quarter round. But we're so happy, we, this floor, we just, we love it. We love the way it feels under our feet. It's real, like it's, I don't, like we have laminate floor in our house and I don't know what, this feels softer. I don't know how to really describe it. Not mushy in any way, just like the texture of the floor is really soft so it feels really good under our feet. It has a little bit of texture so it's not slick. And this color like totally hides all the dirt. <laughs> I mean, I know we're gonna be sweeping and mopping all the time, but this color has, we've actually had this flooring down for a few weeks now and as we've been finishing other things and it has, you can't tell when it's really dirty, which is awesome with four kids. And especially out here, we're like in the middle of a dirt field. It's awesome. We love it. So we're super happy with this floor and how it turned out and just how it has kind of finished giving the bus like a feel like home. And now we are finally ready to start moving in. We have some more projects to show you coming up. You might have spied a few things in here that we haven't showed you yet. Um, but we're really excited. We're so close to being done and hitting the road. And this was like one of our big final projects. So we're excited about how it turned out and we're gonna move on to the next thing now. Okay, so the video we just showed you was filmed over a year ago when we were finishing up the bus right before we moved in. It is now current time, August, 2022. And we thought we would give you an update on how everything is holding up after living in the bus for about 
14 months and traveling in it for over a year. And we're happy to say that everything has held up really well and it's kind of functioned exactly as we hoped. The waterproof flooring, so we can spill things and clean it up and we just don't worry about our floors. It does not show dirt. The color of it is just perfect. We sweep all the time and you would, you know, we always clean up a ton of stuff every time we sweep, but you would never know that all that stuff was on the floor because the color really does not show it. They don't scratch or dent really. It's, you know, we've dropped things on here and they have just held up really well. So we're super happy with the vinyl plank choice that we made with this brand of flooring and everything. We'll put all the information for that on our blog post, which is in the description. And the heated floors is just, man, it just feels like a luxury. We love having the heated floors. Even when it's not really super cold outside or anything, they're so nice to have on just to take that chill off of the floor. They even seem to add a little bit of room temperature heat as well. Like they just take that edge off the chill in the room. Even when none of our other heaters are on, we can tell if the floor heaters are on as well. We don't always use them when we're boondocking. It just depends on how much power we're getting from our solar. They do use about 600 watts. So sometimes we use them, sometimes we don't, but we've been plugged in a lot when we're traveling on the East Coast and we just love having them. So if you're redoing your floors, definitely consider doing this type of heated floors because they don't take up any room, they're super easy to install, and they work great and we love them. So we're really just super happy with how all of our flooring choices are holding up.